Hmm? Either he's with the meteor police, or they're coming to get me. Ah! Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and this month we're going to be taking a look at some of the Generation Selects figures that have become available within recent years. Now some of these I've managed to acquire through dumb luck at some of the local stores. There's at least one in here that was bought for me as a gift, and one of course I've been sitting on for the better part of a year. Since, unfortunately, Robocon was taken out this year. So, we're going to kick things off this month. We're going to take a look at Deep Cover. And Deep Cover here is, of course, an Autobot figure. He's part of the Interplanetary Personnel Exchange Program, where Autobots work with local law enforcement. Deep Cover here has a lot of years serving as an undercover operative and apparently has an ability that allows him to shrink down to about 1 40th of his size. So I guess basically what's in front of us right now would basically be the shrunken form. The original toy came out numerous years ago, according to my sources, back in 2003. It was an exclusive to eHobby, and it used the body of Sideswipe. It sort of did a reverse deco color on Sideswipe, going more in line with the Generation 2 colors. As the Generation 2 version had a black body with red windscreens, which was the opposite of the Generation 1, which was a red body with black windows. Of course, this figure would get released back in 2021. But around that same time concurrently, for the Netflix War for Cybertron line, we would get this figure. Which is essentially the same toy, save for the lack of one accessory. Both of these figures are reissues of the War for Cybertron Siege version of Sideswipe. Alright, let's take a look here at Deep Cover's accessories, starting first with his exclusive one, his gun. It's kind of interesting that the gun has a hole here in the back. It kind of implies that some of the other weapons can be mounted onto it to create a super gun. But all in all, rather interesting. And then, of course, we have a shoulder cannon, which does split into two pieces. First piece is, of course, this white-tipped piece. Which, according to the original side swipe, the Siege version, and the Transformer card game, this is a gyro blaster. So it would basically cause a Transformer, when hit by its blast, to have trouble with their footing. This is rather interesting, and it's, done, it's painted in a white paint, which I hope doesn't wear out or scratch very easily. Which, of course, a regular... For the, so the, blah, 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 the Netflix version of Deep Cover comes with one that's molded in dark gray. And then lastly, of course, we have the cannon itself. 
It has a straight peg in it so it can be clipped to his shoulder, but it does also have a round peg so he can hold it in his hand if you choose to prefer that. And then of course the tip of it is painted in silver paint. Whereas other versions of it have been left black with no paint applications. I don't know which way it looks really better, but whatever. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look now at Deep Cover's articulation, and since he is the same mold as Sideswipe, he would have the exact same articulation. The head can be turned from side to side, and it is on a bit of a ball joint, so it will look up and down a bit. His arms can go out to the side about so far, and they do rotate at the shoulder all the way around. He does have a joint at his elbow, so you can bend his arm at the elbow 90 degrees. And he has a swivel at the bicep, so he has G.I. Joe style battle grip. He can be twisted at his hips, so he does have some dance moves going for him. You can spread his legs apart into a full splits. He does have a bit of a thigh cut, so you can adjust his legs at the thigh, but only in the back direction. They will not adjust anywhere on the front. You can raise his leg up at the hip 90 degrees, and you can bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees. So all in all, Deep Cover has a fair amount of articulation. Okay, it's time to transform Deep Cover now. <clears throat> and he is a relatively easy figure to transform. We start by raising his arms out to the sides like so. Then we're going to rotate his fists into the forearms. And then we will bend his arms at the elbow. Then we'll come down here to his hip. You're going to pop the hip shield free. And that'll cause his chest to be able to be raised up. And just snap it back into place. And we'll fold down the hip shield so it will cover his head. We'll reach inside here. And we're going to fold out these little doors. Then we can return his arms down to the standard position. And then at the shoulder, they can be folded inwards. Make sure they go in all the way and kind of rest there on his abdomen. Then we're going to turn him around at the hip, 180 degrees. We come down here to his legs. We'll open the side pan, we'll open these panels on the front, fold them out to the side. Then you come in here to his feet. Make sure the make also make sure these things here that are in the back of his legs, where his legs bend at the knee, make sure those are pushed back. That way you've got plenty of room for the feet to be folded inward. And of course, once we've done that, put the legs together and then fold them over and snap them into place. Then we can come down here and we close the panels on the legs and close the doors. And then there we have it. Deep Cover is in his alternate mode of a Cybertronian stylized police car. Or at least a Cybertronian stylized Lamborghini type police car. Since he's modeled after Sideswipe, and Sideswipe famously was a Lamborghini. I think the way the badges here are done is meant to invoke the insignia of Lamborghini. As you can see here with this masterpiece figure that we have. We have the Lamborghini logo on there, and if we lay this just above it, you can see that the basic outline 
of the insignia is almost the same. It's not perfect, but it is pretty close enough. You could almost say it's inspired by it. Of course, we know it's meant to resemble more a police badge, but in some ways you could say it's also inspired by that. And of course, they also encourage you to mount the weapons onto deep cover. So we'll put the combined weapon, as the instructions show, onto the top of the car. And the extra gun, of course, can be plugged in into one of the holes on the side of the car. And then, of course, how does deep cover roll on this table? Rolls pretty good. Almost sent him off the table there. And of course, for those who want a comparison shot, here is the Netflix version. Side by side. The only real gripe that I have on the appearance of the Generations one is the blue for the shoulder pads being clearly visible on the sides of the car. I mean, the black is kind of showable here on this one, but since there's a lot of battle damage also done to this one, you can almost invoke that with a little imagination that it's battle damage. But I guess that's just to be a minor gripe. Now we get to my thoughts. What do I think of Deep Cover? I actually like this version of Deep Cover more than the Netflix one. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Netflix one isn't really all that bad. It kind of depicted a wartime stylized transformer. And in many ways it took the battle damage paint jobs that we were getting on the Siege figures and went a little further with it. I really didn't mind the battle damage paint jobs, unlike a lot of the other fans that really didn't care for that. But, when you're dealing with a toy line that deals with a lot of war, you would expect some of the soldiers to show off some battle damage, especially when your soldiers are all mechanical. Very seldom did we ever get any G.I. Joe guys that had anything like body parts missing due to them being amputated or removed from battle. Nor do we get any vehicles that come with battle damage stickers to make it look like that the vehicle in particular has been in a lot of fights. So in some ways this made it a little more realistic. However, though, we're talking more about this one, and this one's more intended to be a collector's toy than one that you would play with with your children. And for what it represents, it's not bad, especially if you didn't happen to get the original eHobby version back in 2003. Especially since that uses the same mold as Sideswipe from Generation 1, You'd have to hope that the part of that the plastic they used is a little more modern to make it hold up a little better. Sideswipe was one of them that was famous for falling apart rather easily due to play wear. So hopefully this one would make a nice substitute for those who would like a deep cover on their shelves. At any rate, that's my look at the Generation Select version of Deep Cover. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content on this channel, we ask that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And of course, before I forget, next weekend I will be at MatsuriCon in Columbus, Ohio. I will be speaking at a couple of panels. You will be getting a video that week because I will have pre-filmed the video, so it will be up on Friday. But hey, if you happen to be in Columbus, Ohio and go into MatsuriCon, drop on by. Keep an eye out for my panels. Come up and say hi. I won't bite. This is Sparkster1701 saying I'll catch you all later.